In this video, we're going to continue our work with thirds and look at rationalising the denominator. In the last video, we looked at dividing with thirds. So an example we had was the root of 27 over the root of 3. We saw that this could be written as the root of 27 over 3, which gave us the root of 9, which gave us 3. This was an irrational denominator. We know that root 3 is an irrational number. We used techniques to simplify this and rewrite it. That won't always be the case, so we can't always use that technique. We might, for example, have 1 over the root of 7, and we need to write this as a rational fraction. We might have 2 over 4 plus root 3. Again, this is not a rational denominator, and we would need to use a different technique. So let's go back to the first video and look at what is meant by a rational number. A rational number is one that could be written in the form a over b, where a and b are integers. So an example of a rational denominator, we could have 1 over 4. That is rational. We could have 2 over 9. That's rational. If we've got now 2 over the root of 6, this is irrational. Root 6 is a third. It's irrational. If we had 1 over 1 plus root 2, this is is an irrational denominator. So this isn't now a rational number. So what we're going to do is look at the techniques that we can use to rewrite these with rational denominators. So why do we bother? Now, there are a few reasons. Mathematicians love them. But our work with thirds becomes slightly easier. So for example, if we're adding or subtracting thirds, it's so much easier to do it if you have a rational denominator. Also, getting a sense of the, the size of a fraction or the magnitude of a fraction is so much easier if we write it with a rational denominator. So before computers were around, it was a lot easier now to look and divide. So if we have now 1 over root 2, the rational equivalent is root 2 over 2. Now we've already seen that root 2 is approximately 1.4. Now, when I think about 1 over 1.4, I've not really got a massively uh, a, a real idea of the size of that fraction. But as soon as I think of about 1.4 over 2, I can see that that's going to be about 0 0.7. So let's put about 0 0.7. So when we look to have a rational denominator, there are advantages. OK, let's go back to the first video and look at our unit square. So the unit square looks something like this. We had side length 1, and we looked at finding the length of the diagonal, which was a hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. So this was 1, this was 1, and we saw that this was the root of 2, just using Pythagoras. 1 squared plus 1 squared square rooted. This is a 45 degree angle. If we look at some basic trig, we know that the sine of 45 degrees from this diagram will be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. We've got 1 over root 2. Now, as this currently stands, it's in a rational denominator. If we take the calculator now and put in the sine of 45 degrees when working in degrees, it will give me the value of root 2 over 2, which is just here. And that's right in the fraction with this rational denominator. So, how does this work? Well, what we're going to do is look at two different types of fractions and two methods to rationalise them. And I'm going to really break this down, and this is a very loose interpretation. We've got form, now the form 1 over root a, and then we have the form of now a plus root b. These are vari there are variations of them, so please don't think they're the only ones that you're going to see, but they're going to be some variation of these two particular forms. We have a different technique for each. I prefer to simply teach it as two techniques, one for the top sort, one for the bottom sort. And as we go on, we will look at different examples of this. So let's look now at how 1 over root 2 became root 2 over 2. So if we take now our 1 over root 2, if we multiply the top and the bottom of a fraction by the same amount, the value doesn't change. So if I said now I've got 1 over 2 and I multiply the top by 5 and multiply by the bottom by 5, we end up with 5 over 10. Both of these are 1 half. So multiplying the top of a fraction and the bottom of a fraction by the same value doesn't now change its size. What I'm going to do here is multiply the bottom of a fraction by root 2 and the top of a fraction by root 2. Why? Well, let's go back to our definition root a multiplied by root a is a. 
So if I multiply now these two irrational numbers, I end up with a rational denominator. So what we've got then in the numerator is 1 times by root 2, which is just root 2, then in the denominator root 2 times by root 2, which is just 2. So if we have now a fraction where we've got a third in the denominator, but no addition or subtraction sign between them, all we need to do is multiply top and bottom of the fraction by the root. So let's do 1 over root 7. We're going to multiply top and bottom by root 7. So root 7 times by 1 is just root 7. Root 7 times by 7 is going to give us 7. Let's look at another one. Let's say we've got now 3 over 2 root 6. Now, at this stage, we don't need to multiply the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction by 2 root 6. We just need to multiply it by root 6. You can, of course, multiply it by 2 root 6. It's just going to make your work slightly more tedious and longer. So in the numerator, we've got now 3 lots of root 6. 6 times by 6, that's going to give us now, for root 6 times by root 6 will give us 6. 2 times by 6 is going to give us 12. We can see that this is going to cancel some more. 3 over 12 is going to give us now 1 over 4. So we end up with root 6 over 4. So always look to simplify further. It's not always going to be the case, but sometimes you might see that it is. So all I've done is multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction. And if we put this in a calculator, let's put 3 over 2 root 6. That's going to give me the exact rational fraction that I've just put here. So nice and straightforward, nice and logical. So let's say we've got now, we will have, let's go for 4 over root 7. Multiplying top and bottom by root 7, we're going to end up with 4 root 7 in the numerator and 7 in the denominator. If we have 1 over 3 root 6, then we're going to multiply top and bottom by the root of 6. So we end up now with root 6 over 3 times 6, which will give us root 6 over 18. So that is how to rationalise the denominator when we have the form 1 over root a, or some variation of that. Essentially, we're looking now where there's no addition or subtraction sign in that denominator. OK, let's move on now where we have an addition or subtraction in the denominator. In the video on multiplying thirds, we looked at the difference of squares. So if I had now, for example, 2 plus root 3, and I multiply this now by 2 minus root 3, we've got the same numeric values, we've just got a different sign. Often we call this second bracket the conjugate. So we're multiplying by the conjugate. So the numeric values are the same, the sign is different. If we expand this out, we're going to get 2 times by 2. Then we're going to get plus 2 multiplied by minus root 3. Then we're going to get plus the 2 multiplied by the positive root 3. And then we're going to get plus the root 3 multiplied by minus root 3. So 2 times 2 is 4. Then we're going to have minus 2 root 3. Then we're going to get plus 2 root 3. And we're going to end up now with minus 3. Just be careful, that's not minus 9. Root 3 times by root 3 is 3. So we've got 4 minus 3, which is 1. And we can see that these are going to cancel. So all of that now has just ended up giving us 1. In general, if we have the difference of squares, x plus y, and then x minus y, we get x squared minus y squared. When you're dealing with thirds, if you have a plus root b multiplied by a minus root b, you end up with a squared minus b. And you can see that in this case right here. If I take 2 and square it, I get 4. If I square root 3, I get 3. Subtract them away, I end up with 1. We're going to use this technique to rationalise denominators. So let's take a fraction. 1 over, now let's say we've got 5 plus now the root of 3. What I want to do is make this fraction rational. So I want a rational denominator. All I'm going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by the same values with a different sign. So if you like to use the word conjugate, you can do. It's not always used, um, but essentially you're looking to form a difference of squares. Let's go ahead and just leave the numerator as it is. So we don't need to. So for example, if that was 4, I wouldn't look to expand out straight away. I just leave it as it is. And then what we're going to have, and to begin with, in this particular module, you do need to show your workings. 5 times by 5 is 25. Then we'll get minus 5 root 3, 
we'll get plus 5 root 3 and then we'll get minus 3. Now you might even have to show this on some, depending on the mark scheme, do check with your teacher. Some mark schemes are quite um, precise in what they want. So we can see these middle terms are cancelling off. So what we end up with in the numerator is 5 minus root 3 over 25 minus 3, which is going to give me 22. So that is now a fraction with a rational denominator. 22 is a rational number. We can write 22 as a over b, where a and b are integers. So that's all we need to do. Let's have a go at another example. So let's now take in the numerator, let's have 4, and then we'll have now 2 minus, and we'll go for root 5. So we need to multiply top and bottom of the fraction by 2 plus root 5. So 2 plus root 5. Initially, I'm not going to expand the brackets, so I'm just going to write the numerator as 2 plus root 5. So in the denominator, 2 times by 2 is going to give me 4. Then we're going to get plus 2 root 5. We'll have minus 2 root 5, and then we'll have minus 5. Again, you might need to show your workings. These are going to cancel off. 4 minus 5 is minus 1, so we have 4 lots of the quantity 2 plus the root 5, and then we've got this divided by minus 1, so we could write this as minus 4, 2 plus root 5. So that's now rational, in effect, because we have 1 in the denominator. So as you can see, that's nice and logical and nice and straightforward. All we've done is multiplied by the conjugate or created the difference of squares. Some examples might be a little tougher. So let's say we take now 2 plus root 2, and then we divide this now by, let's say, 5 minus root 2. So what do we need to do? We're going to multiply top and bottom of the fraction by the conjugate, and that is 5 plus root 2. So 5 plus root 2, 5 plus root 2. I'm just going to leave the numerator alone for now. So what we're going to have is 2 plus root 2, and then we'll have 5 plus root 2. And then in the denominator, I'm going to have 25. Then I'm going to have plus 5 root 2, minus 5 root 2, and then we're going to have minus 2. So what's that going to give me? It's going to give me 23 as these terms are cancelling. So let's expand the numerator. 2 times 5 is 10. Then we're going to get plus 2 root 2, plus 5 root 2, plus 2. And that's all over the denominator of 25 minus 2, which is 23. Uh, so what's that leave me? Uh, in terms of the integers, I've got 12. And then I've got 7 root 2. And that's over 23. So we've got now a rational fraction. 23 is a rational number. And we can just express it like so. So that's a nice example. So this time, all we've done is just multiply top and bottom. Let's look at another one. Let's take now 4 over, and then we'll have now, let's take the root of 3 minus the root of 2. Now, we've got two thirds in the denominator. Really doesn't matter. All we're going to do is multiply top and bottom by root 3 plus root 2. Root 3 plus root 2. So, in the numerator, I'm going to leave this alone as 4 lots of the root of 3 plus now the root of 2. And in the denominator... Root 3 times by root 3 is going to give me 3. Then root 3 times by root 2 is going to give me root 6. We're going to have minus root 6, and there comes our difference of squares, minus root 2 times by root 2, which is 2. So in the numerator, we've got now 4 lots of root 3 plus root 2. These terms are cancelling. 3 minus 2 is going to give us 1. So we could write this as 4 lots of the root of 3 plus the root of 2. And as stated, if you put this in a calculator, let's go ahead and do that. So what did we have? 4 over the root of 3. So the root of 3 minus now the root of 2. In later videos, we'll look at typical exam style questions. So you can see what they've done here. They've expanded it out. It's 4 lots of root 3 plus 4 lots of root 2. I personally prefer it written like so. But we can see exactly what that's done. So in later videos, we will look at exam style questions. The idea of this video is just to give you the two different scenarios. The scenario where you just have a third alone in the denominator, where you multiply top and bottom by that denominator, and then when you have an additional subtraction sign in the denominator and you multiply by the conjugate. OK, let's finish with a little practical example. Let's uh, just make something up. Let's grab up a rectangle. So let's say we've got one side length and we said now that this side length was 3 plus root 2 units. 
we were told that the area was 6 and we wanted to find this length. So we know that the area is the length times by the width. So we could say now that x multiplied by 3 plus root 2 would be equal to 6. So these two lengths multiplied give us 6. Therefore, we could say x, which is what we're trying to find, is 6 over 3 plus root 2. So all we need to do now is multiply top and bottom by now the conjugate. So let's just write that like so. So what we'd have is 6, then we'd have 3 minus root 2, and then in the denominator we'd have 3 plus root 2 multiplied by 3 minus root 2. Now I'm going to be a bit lazy here. Um, as we can see, for all it is, is this number squared minus this number squared. In fact, I'll, I'll do it fully. I'll do it fully rather than... Because uh, I want, essentially, to get into good habits for your exam. So 3 times uh, by 3 is 9. Then we're going to have now minus 3 root 2 plus 3 root 2 minus 2. So we've got 6, 3 minus root 2, and then that's all over 9 minus 2, which is 7. So x now is the value right here. So nice and nice and logical, it's just a practical example. These two multiplied equal 6, therefore 6 divided by this side length will give us the other one, and we can just go ahead and rationalise the denominator. So there we go. That now builds up all the skills that we need for certs, and in the next video we're going to work through loads of different examples, and it will just be a case of putting all of these ideas together.